So maybe you're doing a degree and you want to take the probability exam, SOA, during that degree or shortly after. How do you go about doing it? How do you pass it? First go to the exam website. It has some very helpful information, but the most important thing that you want to start out with is this document. Any one of these, but depending on the month you're going to take it, you view the corresponding one. So let's just look at the most recent one, September 2021 syllabus. This syllabus has a preamble section about the details of the test itself, but what you want to look for is the list of topics. This list of topics is very important because it will tell you exactly what is on the exam and more importantly it might not it might not perfectly match up to the courses you might have taken in university or even if it matches up maybe you might not have delved deeply enough into one or more of these topics so you really want to take a good look at it the first section is on general probability that's the smallest section and if you look at the list of topics most people would have gotten through these in their first course on probability but the next two sections are bigger and that's where it gets a little more complicated univariate random variables this list of topics cover every single one it will come especially applying transformations that's something that in many courses where they don't put too much emphasis on depending on your school and your teacher and the needs of the course but you need to focus on it and some textbooks don't really treat it that well so just be careful of that and when it comes to multivariate random variables also super important everything you see in here make sure that whatever textbook you're using has covered different aspects of this because you're going to need it for the exam lower down in this syllabus they have a list of suggested texts i will talk about those in a little bit not all of them are important but depending on your needs depending on your prior knowledge and depending on what you find yourself wanting to focus on for the exam you would need more than just one of these books no individual one of these books really covers everything about this exam fully so maybe you need to borrow it from your library or maybe you already have them or you can get them secondhand or maybe you want to purchase them new which would cost you a bit but you do need to consult more than just one textbook for this exam the other resources are this pdf document produced by the soa called risk and insurance and this one it's not too long but it is quite detailed it discusses various aspects of risks and insurance because after all that's largely what the actuarial exams are geared towards right so you need to look through this document and internalize all the things that it offers next we have the sample questions and solutions these are two documents complement each other so this document of solutions actually solves every single one of the questions from here so taking a look at that sample questions this document has 328 questions in it so it's a question bank that is relevant to the exam itself I cannot emphasize enough how important this document is go through every single question and do them do them from scratch and then use the file with solutions to mark yourself to grade yourself and if you want you can also time yourself so you choose some selection of questions from this and give yourself three hours no distractions sit and do the exam this is a very good way to practice for this test because it's not only about the knowledge yes of course the knowledge is paramount but you need to do it under timed conditions the exam does not consist of 328 questions but you can select a subset from these questions and use it for practice as well 
on this syllabus there's a link to an online sample exam and it looks like this so you have the SOAP as exam P sample exam and down below there's a button that you can click and you can see the timer the three hour timer starts and this is question one of 30 so there are 30 questions and you go through and work them out as you wish like whatever pace is comfortable for you you do that and this exam every time you click it you will be pulling from a bank of questions that are not the same it's a sort of randomized exam and this is very beneficial because you get to take a sample from the SOA under timed conditions it's already laid out here for you and it mimics the computer-based version of the exam now towards the textbooks personally I have benefited from a first course in probability by Ross mathematical statistics with applications by Warkley and probability and statistical inference by hog these three books were invaluable they were very straightforward but yet very detailed and what I particularly liked about Sheldon Ross's book especially is that there are detailed solutions at the end not for everything but for a large number of the questions not just answers but solutions that's really good. So if you are tackling probability in a rigorous way for the first time, I think Ross is something that you want to start with. But if you take a look at these books, I'm just looking on Amazon right now so that I can show the table of contents. Um, the, Ross's book, you can see that a lot of the topics are covered. So his book is laid out a little bit differently like the first chapter is dedicated exclusively to combinatorial analysis you just deal with counting and so on and then he goes into the axioms of probability but in any case the entire book almost is relevant except for chapters 9 and 10 everything here is relevant because as you can see the last topic that was mentioned on the syllabus was the central limit theorem and chapter 8 is what does that so you really want to go through the entire book you don't have to do every single exercise and read every single line but you should at least look at Ross's treatment of each topic I would warn though that Ross does not cover every single thing from the syllabus in the detail that you would need because for example the syllabus says uh, in section 3 it says calculate moments for joint conditional and marginal random variables also it talks about applying transformations and I found that mathematical statistics by Wackerly did that a bit better so taking a look at the table of contents you could see here chapter 5 talks about see marginal and conditional probability distributions there's an entire section dedicated to that as well as in chapter 6 they talk about functions of random variables and they deal exclusively in one section with the method of transformations and the method of moment generating functions so these things are very important and you need to go through them very carefully now Hogg's text is a bit different because well for one thing it's bigger than what you need because chapters 1 through 5 talk about probability and then as of chapter 6 it goes more into statistical inference after all the book is called probability and statistical inference you just need chapters 1 through 5 personally I find that Hogg's book it's a bit more clear a little more down to earth about many of the topics in probability that are needed for this exam but I would caution that it doesn't go into every bit of detail on its own as what is required for the exam so this is why my recommendation is that you use 
multiple books to cover each of the topics. And my choices were Hogg's book, Ross's book, and Wackerly's book. I can almost guarantee that if you go through each of these things carefully and do all of the sample exam questions and use the solutions to grade yourself and improve where needed, you're going to pass this exam on your first try. As for the amount of time it takes from start to finish, assuming that maybe your probability is a bit rusty, or maybe you even haven't taken probability before, I would say six months, six to eight months, depending. Some people say they can do it in three months. Personally, I feel like that's a stretch, but you might be of a different opinion. My recommendation is at least six months of preparation for this exam. And the last thing I want to mention in terms of requirements would be calculus. Maybe not for the beginning parts of probability, but when you're studying continuous random variables and so on, differentiation and integration are going to become useful and relevant. And if you haven't seen those things before, you will need to learn them. So ideally, if you could at least learn enough calculus to know what differentiation and integration are, what is a limit, and how to do some simple examples of those, you should be able to move forward in studying for this exam. Realistically, if you haven't taken calculus before, you're going to have a hard time with later parts of the syllabus. So brush up on your calculus and follow each of these steps. Consult these books, consult the practice questions, and stick to the syllabus. Ensure that you've covered every single topic. The syllabus is there for you. You can access it in a nice handy PDF. Keep it with you and always keep referring back to it and keeping track of what you've covered until you reach the end. These are my recommendations. Best of luck in attempting this exam and I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. I appreciate all of the time you've taken to watch this video. Thank you.